Alice never saw the harm in letting Jack sleep with the foal in the stable. However, the consequences years later proved otherwise. Learning that Jack had run away. Panic consumed Alice. She doubted the police's efforts and considered the strange lead a prank. The bus driver held vital information. Jack's presence on the bus was confirmed. But his destination remained a mystery. The police were astonished when they reviewed the bus station cameras, it was undeniably Jack. Why would he be on that bus? Going in the opposite direction of his school. The police were clueless. But Jack's parents knew the reason instantly. They couldn't fathom Jack's capability. But they had no choice but to rush in their car. Hoping to arrive in time. When Alice was younger. She competed in equestrian competitions and was quite successful. When Alice read about battle horses. And what was happening to them. She knew she had to do something. After receiving financial support from those close to her, she was able to start a horse farm, where horses are nursed back to health, and given a second chance at life. Every day Alice and her husband, Greg, did everything in their power to help the horses. Years and years passed, and Greg and Alice could not imagine any other future for themselves. Not even when little boy Jack was born there a perfectly healthy boy who has become obsessed with the horses on the farm over the years. Sam was brought in as a young foal, who was severely malnourished and distanced from his mother. He recovered quickly and got better. When he first met little Jack, a special bond was formed. Their bond even went so far that, at one point Jack took a nap with Sam in the stable. If Jack wasn't there, Sam would throw such a tantrum that Alice and Greg would bring Jack over. When Jack was six, Alice and Greg had to sell Sam. Even though Sam and Jack had such a good bond, it didn't bode well for Jack to spend his whole life on the horse farm. He needed a place where people could ride him every day and take even better care of him. This news was very difficult for Jack to process. Two years passed and not much had changed at the horse farm. Alice and Greg would tend to any horses that came in. When the horses were grown and healthy, they would be sold. And Jack would play with the horses every day. Something about Jack didn't seem right, however. From the moment Sam was sold, something seemed to have changed in Jack. He wasn't the happy little boy he used to be. Alice decided that they should take Jack to the riding school. That Sam was being sold to. And when Gray heard their plan. He immediately joined. This would surely make Jack feel better again. However, they only told Jack that they were going away for the weekend. But wouldn't tell him where. On Saturday morning, they got into their car for the six-hour drive. Jack still didn't know what was going on. They reached a riding school, and he saw the horses in the fields. He had no idea why they were here. At the very back of the field, he saw a beautiful majestic bay horse. And he knew immediately it was Sam. Without thinking about it, Jack crawled. Under the fence and ran into the field. When Sam noticed this, he ran straight to Jack. Even after years apart, he still knew who Jack was and all he wanted was to play with him again. Jack and Sam were once again inseparable over the weekend. When it was time to leave, Jack's tears began to flow again. They were glad they went to writing school. And so was Jack. Oh, he was happy, his tears couldn't be stopped. Days turned into weeks. And weeks turned into months as Jack seemed to start feeling better. Alice and Greg had wondered if bringing him back to Sam was a good decision. But once they saw how he felt now, they didn't worry about it anymore. Alice and Greg were so happy to see their son was no longer sad. What they didn't know was that this was about to change. Jack would be spending less and less time at the horse farm. And only seeing his parents a few hours a day.
It got to a point where Jack was no longer spending time at the horse farm. And his parents were too busy to see what was actually going on. During these past few weeks, Jack hatched a plan. He would do something that would shock everyone around him. It all became clear to him as he rode the bus to school the next day. It was around 11 a.m. when Jack's school called Alice. And asked if she had seen Jack. They didn't call in sick. So they expected him to be at school. Alice got the shock of her life when she heard that. After a few minutes. Alice pulled herself together. And ran to Greg and told him what she had just learned. Greg immediately picked up his phone to call the police. But the police told him. They could only report someone missing after 24 hours. Greg was very upset and told the police that this was crazy. But there was nothing he could do about it. Greg jumped in his car and drove around the neighborhood, hoping to find her son. He drove around for hours, but there was no sign of Jack. The next day, Greg immediately went to the police station to report his son missing. Nevertheless, he was annoyed that this was only possible after one day. He felt like they had wasted a day. But after a lot of paperwork, it was the turn of the full police force. Not much happened in the town where they lived. Mostly only small crimes were committed. Something as big as a child's disappearance was unusual. The police began interviewing many people to begin their investigation. Pictures of Jack were shown on the news and in local newspapers. With a message to call the police station if anyone saw him. However, days went by and no new leads came in. Until the police questioned the school bus driver. Since the day Jack went missing. They went through all the stops. Because there was no other way Jack could get off the bus. Before he got to school. When they did, the case got underway. There was only one stop on the way to school. This stop was at the local bus station. Where buses departed to many different locations around the country. The police officers immediately went to the bus station. Where Jack may have gotten off the bus. At first glance, the bus station staff didn't think they saw Jack. They had been following the news. And if they had seen him, they would have called the police. Just to be sure, the police asked them to check the cameras. After watching the footage for hours. An officer thought he saw someone who looked like Jack. They rewound and sharpened the image. When they did, they were shocked. They placed an image of Jack alongside the footage. And could only conclude that this was indeed him. Reviewing the footage. They observed Jack boarding a bus bound for. A small village town six hours away. Perplexed, officials couldn't fathom. Why he would choose such a remote location with. Vast open fields and little to offer. Desperate for answers. They turned to Jack's parents and. Stumbled upon Alice and Greg's horse farm. Inquiring about the village's significance. Alice broke down in tears upon hearing its name. Suddenly, everything became clear. The village was the same one they had visited years ago. Where Sam had been sold at the riding school. Without hesitation. Alice and Greg swiftly got into their car. And embarked on the six-hour drive to the riding school. Uncertain but determined. They set out on a journey to confirm Jack's whereabouts. Arriving at the riding school. Alice and Greg shared their story with the owners. They searched the fields but found nothing unusual. Just as doubt crept in, a peculiar sight caught their attention. They hurried to Sam's stables. And discovered Jack peacefully sleeping beside the horse. Overjoyed, they woke him up and expressed their concerns. The owners insisted on Sam's return. Recognizing the strong bond between Jack and the horse. Within a week, Sam returned to the horse farm. Thriving and inseparable from Jack, forever reunited as best friends. When certain events cannot be explained by science or logic. These stories are able to inspire fear in everyone. This is how myths and legends are born.
This is especially true in small villages. Where rumors travel very quickly. And people tend to exaggerate for added entertainment. The story we are about to tell today is astonishing. Unusual, and it tells how human beings are feared. Let's get started. The story takes place in a small remote village in the Far East. Which is located on the outskirts of the Tiger Forest. One morning in January. A local resident went outside to check his surroundings. He was dumbfounded when he saw a huge wolf. Tracks in the freshly fallen snow. They seemed to have come straight out of the forest. Meandering along the road. And walking up and down the neighboring houses. Out of fear, the man ran home, picked up a gun, called a friend. And they set off on foot together. Hitting the road, hoping to track down and capture the intruder. Can the two find any surprises? They found that the footprints of. The two wolves entered a yard of local residents. But there were no traces of them going back on the ground. Does this mean that the wolves are still inside? The men readied their guns and knocked on the gate. The man who lived in the house heard the sound and came out. He heard the neighbors say that he didn't see any wolves. The surprised hunter returned home. But they were still worried, a few days passed, heavy snow fell. And now the whole village was covered with fresh snow. He went out into the street in the morning and saw new wolf tracks. Which filled the whole village. So the hunter followed them to the house of an old couple. Who again denied the existence of wolves. And neither did they know where these footprints come from. Panic broke out in the village. No one can explain where these footprints came from. What kind of invisible wolf are they? Why did they come to the village and never leave? People started telling the story to each other. And each time they added their imaginations. One even said that he saw two werewolves wandering the village at night. People left the house in fear. Kids were not allowed to go to school or play outside. The men organized patrols and went out every night in hopes of catching these unprecedented animals that were disturbing the peace. When they found nothing, the men realized their patrol had probably scared off the animals. So they decided to hide in different parts of the village and wait for them. And after several nights of hard work, they were finally spotted. One of them suddenly saw what they were waiting for. On the side of the forest, two huge shadows entered the village. It was obviously two huge wolves. They walked slowly along the previous route. And they wander in the yard. Then they came to the house of an elderly couple. And disappeared behind the gate. The people who had been watching them. Went to the fence and looked inside. What they saw made them stunned and confused. The owner of the house opened the door and let the two huge wolves in. Afterwards, he looked around, as if to make sure no one saw them, and closed the door behind him. The hunter started banging on the gate, yelling for him to come out immediately, and explain to them what was going on in the house. And they realized that they could no longer hide from the wolves. And the old couple told them their story. It turned out that two years ago while walking in the forest, the body of a female wolf killed by poachers was found. With two cubs lying near the body. At first, the couple thought the pups were dead too. But suddenly they made a barely audible noise. And they picked them up immediately. The couple realized the pups were still alive. So they decided to take them home. They couldn't keep them tell anyone in the village about this. Because it is against the rules. And wolves are usually killed. Because they pose a threat to local residents and livestock. So, unbeknownst to everyone, they fed the wolf cubs at home and took them back to the forest. But instead of what they wanted, the wolves did not want to be separated from their savior. And they often came to their house under the cover of night and played with them there until morning. And then they quietly returned to the forest. The old couple kept it as secret as possible. They knew that meeting the wolf would not end well. 
And they were terrified. The locals were moved by the story. And they agreed not to kill the docile wolves. But to let them return to the forest safely. After all, they did not touch anyone. And even drove the other wolves from the village. Friends, if you like this story. Please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. We will tell many wonderful stories, hello everyone. In the following video, we will tell you an interesting story about a wolf. Who used his kindness to repay a human being. It was one summer, an old man was walking in the forest. He suddenly saw a wolf cub. It was lying under the bushes near the path. He was not as big as a puppy. The old man came to him, but the little wolf cub didn't run away. He was thin and sad, what happened to him? Why doesn't he run away? He thought to himself. When he got very close to the little wolf. The poor thing wanted to run. But he couldn't, he turned out his paw was broken. And the man couldn't leave him there alone. He felt sorry for the little wolf cub. So he put the kid in his bag and went home. At home the old man checked the wolf cub's paws. He was sure his bones were broken. How could this be? He puts a bandage on the animal's paw. Which will help the bones grow back together, obviously. This is very painful for the wolf, he is very difficult. But he seems to understand that this person is trying to help him. Then the man prepared a place for his new pet and went to feed him. The man called Gray, and about six weeks later. The pup was mostly recovered. His damaged bones seem to have grown back together. And while it is still a bit lame, this wolf pup loves to run around the yard wherever he is. And is quick to run to his owner whenever a man calls it beside. The animal eats what is in the man's hand. Accompanies him to the forest like a puppy. And returns home obediently. Gray is a kind wolf who loves humans. One day a boy nearby saw this wolf and they even made friends. They were both small so they had the same interest and that was games. The boy brought different sweets to his friends every day. One day Gray disappeared and the old man couldn't find it anywhere. Maybe its wildness came into play. And it went to the forest where the wolf should live. The boy cried for a long time he longed to see his friend. And the old man promised the boy that. When the boy was a little older he would bring him a puppy from the city. Two years passed, the old man completely forgot about his wolf. He lived alone in the house in the village. One day, the boy's mother came to the old man. She cried, she said her son went for a walk in the morning. Then disappeared. Probably he went to play in the forest and lost his way. The boy's mother ran to ask the people in the village. To find the boy in the forest. And the old man took his hunting equipment and went to the forest to find him. Four hours passed. Suddenly, the old man heard something running out of the bushes. It made a loud noise, the old man picked up his gun, and was about to shoot. At that moment, he saw a wolf jumping towards him. The beast was huge and gray and he was right next to him. He noticed that the man stopped for a moment on the path. And he glared at it angrily, and just as the old man was about to shoot. The wolf sprang up again, and he noticed that. The wolf was limping on its front paws. And then suddenly he thinking of his gray. So the man with the gun yelled, gray. After jumping a few more times. The wolf stopped and turned its head. It looked at the old man for a long time. And then turned its head to run again. But it only took a few steps slowly and stopped to look back at him. The wolf recognized him. The man, it was really gray. The animal that lived in his yard like a pet dog two years ago. The wolf howled into the bushes of the forest. And it looked around as if telling the man to follow him. What does he want to do? Where does he want me to go? They walked about 100 steps. And suddenly, he saw the boy who was sleeping in the bushes. And the wolf was sitting beside him. Ah, now I understand why you called me. Cried the old man in surprise. 
You are here to watch over your friend. The man wanted to pet the well-behaved wolf. But the wolf took a step back. And it started whimpering like a crying puppy. And the wolf was still scared because the old man was a human. And humans are the worst enemies of wolves. In the past two years. The wolf has been used to living in the forest as a wild animal. But it knows the boy, that is its friend. So it decides to protect him in the forest. The man took the little boy in his arms. Then turned to the wolf and said. Thank you for saving the little boy. Gray, and now you can go. After saying this to the wolf. The man walked slowly towards the house. But Gray didn't leave. And he followed the old man. Still limping a little. And whining, as if he wanted to say something. And they came to the end of the forest. Here you can see the fields. The wolf stopped and looked at the man. And the boy for a long time as they went away. And then slowly, as if reluctantly. He disappeared into the forest. And after a while the old man heard him howling. Sad as a sob, probably. The wolf is saying goodbye to the man. Who saved it that day and its little companion boy.